Okay, hello. Uh, today uh, we'll talk about uh, uh, an important uh, North American architect. Uh, actually, he was born in Ireland, uh, Kevin Roach, uh, born in 1922. And let's, uh, let's uh, read a little bit about him. Uh, as you can see, uh, him, on, him on interesting first name, uh, Kevin Roach, uh, born on June 14th, and today is June 14th, but 2023. Uh, so he was born exactly 100, 101 years ago on, on this day, June 14th, and died in 2019. Um, like many architects, he lived a long life. Was an Irish-born American Pritzker Prize winning architect. He has been responsible for the design master planning for over 200 built projects in both the United States and abroad. These projects include eight museums, 38 corporate headquarters, seven research facilities, performing arts centers, theaters, and campus buildings for six universities. In 1967, he created the master plan for the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City, and henceforth designed all of the new wings and installations, installation of many collections, including the recently well, at the time when this was written, reopened American and Islamic uh, wings. In other words, a very successful architect, maybe a little bit too successful, if I can say so. Born in Dublin and a graduate from the University College, Roach went to the United States to study with Ludwig Mies van der Rohe at the, at the Illinois Institute of Technology in Chicago. In the United States, he became the principal designer for Eero Saarinen and opened his own architectural firm in 1967. Among other awards, Roach received the Pritzker in 1982, the Gold Medal Award from the American Academy of Arts and Letters in 1990, and the AIA, the American Institute of Architects, Architects or Architecture Gold Medal in 1993. Uh, this was the man, and I liked the, this picture of him, you know, because he's reading. Well, he's reading, but with a glass of, I imagine, wine in front of him. But I, I, I like his expression, you know. He's uh, like an interesting, unpretentious man. And uh, here he is in his old age, uh, as, as I said. And you saw he lived for a, a very long life, Kevin Roach. Uh, here he is like... <laughs> with a mischievous uh, expression on his face, kind of, you know, middle life, middle life crisis. He looks a little bit like uh, Joseph Brodsky here, the, the youngest uh, Nobel Prize laureate in poetry, born in Russia. And here is something else. Unfortunately, 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 architects in the end betray themselves, their big ego. Look at him. <laughs> I mean, it's a difference now between this man and this man. Sad. I mean, yes, he built that building on the right, but I don't know. Is this evolution so in, or involution? Here he is with, I don't know, is this the Pritzker? It happens that I see the two colors of the Ukrainian flag there. Um, but this would have been in anticipation because uh, this happened, I don't know, uh, before the war in Ukraine for certain, although he seems to be here, you know, in, in, in the 21st century. Kevin Roach and John Dinkelu, uh, they work together, these two architects. As far as I know, everything that, that was designed by Kevin Roach was designed working together with John uh, Dinkelu. I, I don't think uh, that firm uh, split, like it happened often. And here they are, on the left, Kevin Roach, on the right, uh, John Dinkelu. Uh, and uh, I, I made this note, obviously malicious, and maybe not quite correct, but it crossed my mind that uh, somehow, because it's known the Irish uh, are you know, Catholics, I, I ask myself if, if his architecture is not some kind of a Catholic capitalism, if there is something like this. Now, I start with a famous work by them, and it was, a, it was and it is still a very good building. 
but for a, for a company that uh, you know brought upon us the T model and uh, you know the disaster of uh, pollution through a multitude 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 giant multitude of cars cars and cars again because we arrived at saying instead of saying oh lord we say oh ford the ford foundation in new york city but the building is good here we see the, the chrysler building in manhattan and this is uh, the building i don't know exactly when it was built uh, maybe early 60s you know so it it, it is uh, 60 70 years old the uh, building um it's a good building and it's a good building uh, uh, thanks in good measure to a very generous atrium which is populated by uh, uh, by nature to an extent of course it's a luxurious building who can afford the you see the the actual building the office building is in l and all this space that is left here uh you know almost bigger than the, the office space per se is an open space uh well ford uh, afforded it of course and here you see in the section I don't know how those trees feel there. I guess they have a good life. You know, they are nourished with the uh, ingredients of some sort and they have plenty of net, uh, light, uh, but they are still uh, encapsulated. They are still incarcerated in the, in the glorious cage of man. And here, here is the building. Mr. Ford is um, uh, incarcerating uh, um the lord because if uh, frank lloyd Wright was correct when he said i believe in nature but i spell it god then you know uh, these trees are uh, the emissaries uh, uh, the ambassadors of god and uh, mr ford uh, in uh, complicity with uh, the architects uh, kevin roach and john dinkelow uh, uh, incarcer incarcerated the trees, the emissaries of God. Uh, but it's it's a good building with, you know, uh, if we accept uh, this kind of, uh, you know, uh, treatment that nature is uh, supposed to submit to, if I'm sure they have a good life there. I'm, I don't know about the trees, but certainly the human beings, uh, you know, planning even more expansions of their magnificent cars. That's where the money is. Otherwise, you know, look at the office of an executive, you know, I don't expect to, to, to see, you know, on, on those shelves, um, Arthur Schopenhauer or Friedrich Nietzsche, but uh, they don't need the troubled uh, philosophers in order to increase their revenues. Money, money, and again, money. And cars running, running, running. And here is the architect, sure of himself. He got it. He built a lot, he covered the earth, he made his signature buildings. Now the convention center in Dublin is a burlesque building. Look at this. <laughs> you know, Kevin Roach and John Dinkel. Maybe he drank a little bit from that glass of wine that we saw uh, in front of him in the first picture with him. I, he did better buildings than this, that's for sure. But maybe it was difficult for him to be build, build in Ireland. But it, it is, in a way, maybe it is an Irish building by a, an Irish architect. It is not modest and it's, uh, it shows, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, a burlesque uh, manifestation of, uh, uh, you know, being uh, radical, so to speak, or other.
Now, of course, at that time, there was no concern for sustainability because so much glass you can imagine without air conditioning, uh, you collapse there in the summer. The Oakland Museum in California, this is a good work. This is a work which I like uh, by uh, Kevin Roach and John Dinkelo because it's almost uh, no museum or an anti-museum because it is fragmented in, 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 in pavilions and you see nature in some kind of a dialogue with the buildings. Uh, and um, yes, it is a strict uh, geometry being used, but with a certain degree of freedom. And um, I like the labyrinthical uh, aspect of it. I like that it is horizontal and I don't think it's deterministic or not deterministic enough. So if you would see this picture, just this as it is, would you say this is a museum? No, you would probably say this is an urban park, but it's actually a museum. I think they did a good job here. And people seem to enjoy it. And it's this relationship with the outside which matters so much. It's not a monolithic building like we saw the convention center in Dublin. No, it's dispersed. And this is its quality. It is dispersed and it's also a lot of it underground. And look at the plan. It's a great graphic work. I mean, you know, if you judge it for its artistic qualities, you would put it on a, on a wall without realizing that this is actually the the plan, well, the view from the top of the, of the plan of the building is the plan of the museum. Not bad. Look at this. You you would be very, it would be very legitimate for you to ask, where is the museum? Where is the museum? It's here. A surprising work from uh, uh, Kevin Roach because most of his buildings are not like this. Now the Aetna Life and Casualty Company Computer Headquarters in Hartford, 1969. So, uh, you know, uh, 54 years ago. Uh, well, this is an assertive building, uh, headquarters, you know, uh, uh, in 1969, uh, computer headquarters in 1969, yes, computers existed before the personal computers. But this is a, probably an insurance company, Aetna Life. They have all the money in the world. It, it's, it's convincing. It's well done. It's, um, you know, sculptural, it's massive, it's uh, impressive. And uh, being impressive, you go in and you put your money down hoping for an eternal life and Aetna uh, will uh, make sure that uh, you will indeed have an eternal life. But at that time, other architects were kind of the same way, you know, I am pay and so on. It, it was a, in the air, so to speak, this, this kind of architecture. No trouble at all to use concrete and so on. Nobody would, would think about the pollution that concrete uh, provoked. The Power Center for the Performing Arts University of Michigan at Ann Arbor in Michigan, there, there is a very important university in the United States, 1971. Again, you know, it's, 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 it's a building which commands uh, attention, is vigorous, is uh, you know, uh, even symmetrical, it's massive, it's uh, sculptural, it's muscular. I actually uh, like that modernism from the 60s and 70s, when people truly had op optimism, the war, the Second World War ended, Vladimir Putin, uh, well, he was born, but he was still a child. So, you know, people didn't think about the end of the world. 
and uh, you know they they built they believed in this modernity and it shows the architecture is confident and expresses uh, this uh, confidence i would say adequately it's a university campus but you can tell here that there is uh, some kind of a academic uh, capitalism uh, but i'm not I, I'm not intending to criticize a building which is, I would say, uh, more than acceptable. Now, the Knights of Columbus headquarters, funny the naming, you know, Knights. These are not the Knights of the Apocalypse. These are not the Knights of the Middle Ages. They are the Knights of Columbus headquarters in New Haven, Connecticut. And I think it's a good building. I mean, both are good buildings. But because both the structure on the left and the tower were built by Kevin Roach. Uh, one was destroyed, unfortunately. And But look at the tower. It does have force. Uh, it, it is uh, impressive. Now, what exactly these so-called knights uh, did and do? Business, what else? Financial speculations. Let's not imagine that uh, you know they were animated by uh, spiritual or uh, idealistic concerns. No, it's about money. They have the money to hire uh, uh, Kevin Roach and John Dinkel. But it's a again, it's a heroic architecture celebrating capitalism when capitalism had very few adversaries. I mean, besides uh, you know the. Uh, communist or socialist um, part of the world. I, I kept saying, and I will continue to say, it, it, it was not communism that uh, damaged the climate. It was capitalism. And it is capitalism exactly because of its successes. Uh, the communists were poor. Uh, yes, they did uh, terrible things themselves. But they didn't cover the, the earth with um, highways and cars because they didn't have the money for that. It was the capitalist uh, uh, unstoppable uh, uh, passion for progress that uh, created uh, you know, the anomaly of having only three seasons in uh, Romania, for example, because winter is gone. And capitalists had no problem to destroy the structure on the right, which 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 is um, it's, it's a good building. Um, okay, not very modest, although it is horizontal. But um, uh, if I remember correctly, I saw pictures with it being destroyed, and the tower during the construction. Yes, in a certain way, um, uh, Kevin Roach was a courageous architect in the sense that he allowed himself to build in this muscular way, in this vigorous way. This is a parking, I imagine. All that structure there, which is, uh, you know, uh, cantilevered uh, rather dramatically left and right, all steel, 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 and steel again. Why? Because we can. And you can imagine the cost of these buildings. And nature. Nature and dust and cars, 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 and the blue sky. Well, the blue sky is maybe not so blue any longer. The temples of consump consumption, look at this. Was it me who wrote this? Maybe the temples of consumption. So the temple of consumption, the horizontal one, demolished, although a rather recent building, no? I mean, we have buildings by Andrea Palladio, no? We have buildings by the Gothic builders. We have buildings by the Greeks and buildings by the Egyptians. This was built 50 years ago and is demolished because capitalism uh, is unstoppable in its... Uh, obsession with, uh, you know, uh, progress. But the tower is still, the tower of the knights uh, is still there. Now, a, a most unusual US postal office, because when you think of a postal office, you think of a little office where you have to stay in line in order to send the letter. Well, not too many people send letters any longer. 
But sometimes we do have to go to the post office, but not this kind of post office. Look at this. And it's not bad. It's just that this cannot be a post office and not even in the United States. I lived for many years in the United States. I never saw such a post office. But it's true, I lived in big cities. This seems to be, you know, uh, with plenty of space around. It could have been a museum. It could have been a college. It could have been a memorial. But a postal of a, a post office, no way. But it's a good building. Maybe even, uh, uh, you know, uh, certain artists, minimalists or not, would have um, liked it, like Donald Judd, for example. Post office. <laughs> it's amazing. No, really. <laughs> Can you imagine going into this building to buy a stamp? <laughs> no. College Life Insurance Company, headquarters again. This man designed so many headquarters. My God, my God. In response to a growing company's request for office space, Kevin Roach, John Dinkelu, and associates developed a master plan that would allow the incremental addition of force play floor space over time. The initial design included nine identical buildings arranged in a parallelogram totaling 1.2 million square feet. Only three of the buildings were constructed in the initial phase, and the expansion plan was never fulfilled. The trio is known as the pyramids, and you'll understand soon why, for their simple geometry and slanting glass facades. Here they are, the three pyramids. <laughs> You know, I mean, these are not, there are no uh, tombs of uh, famous pharaohs here. They are just, you know, this is just uh, the headquarter of, of some company, you know, uh, life insurance. I mean, you know, insurance companies, they have all the money in the world. Why? Because it is still a culture of fear. I mean, you know, you turn on the radio, what do you hear? Are you over 50? Are you insured? You are not insured? So, of course, you run immediately to the headquarters of the insurance company and put your little money there because, because you don't want to die. You don't want to be, uh, you know, forced into, uh, you know, receiving destiny in your room uninsured. You have to be insured. And look... Look at the massive buildings, you know, it's in a way it's ridiculous, really. <laughs> because even the pyramids in Egypt get eroded over time. But here, you know, the, the splendor in grass or not in grass of these uh, uh, bureaucratic pyramids is uh, uh, so, uh, in a way, so naive, you know. And look at this. It, 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 it's, it's really Lux Calme Volupte. Is a look at the look at the armchairs. All of this is done in order to get your money, to deposit your money in the insurance plan. And do you think it's an accident that they chose the, the formal paradigm of the pyramid? No, because anyone unconsciously or consciously associates the pyramid with eternity. So if you give money to an insurance company that is housed architectonically into a pyramid or pyramid-like building, uh, you know, a certain psychic mechanism tells you, whispers in your ear or in your mind or in your soul, you live forever. Just as because, because you are already associated with King Tut, with a pyramid. <laughs> And of course, it's not like this. We are born in, in order to die, but we are not blades of grass. We still hope that somehow we'll endure, especially if we are insured. And he planned more, I think nine pyramids. Uh, yeah, they only built three. I hope I have here the plan. I, I saw somewhere a um, uh, diagram with the plan. Yes, that's what he... That's what he proposed. Nine pyramids, for God's sake. I mean, you can imagine that these insurance companies in the United States are immensely rich. Not only in the United States, of course. Anyway.
look at that. Maybe, you know, this funambulesque uh, possible development of, 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 of this uh, complex of buildings would have made even uh, Le Corbusier anxious or envious, considering his plan voisin for Paris. I look at this. Luxury, large spaces, plenty of light. But do you think any of these people would write a poem about the splendor of the sky or, 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 or you know, a light and so on? No way. They have their heads lowered on some miserable papers filled with numbers in order to get the maximum profit. This is the rule. This is the law. And look at that, uh, you know, conference table. God. You know, it's, uh, of course, uh, they, on this chair uh, here, uh, unique as it is, uh, sits either Vladimir Putin or the CEO of this insurance company, and he rules everything. What are these? I don't know. Giant screens of some sort, or I, I don't know. It's intimidating, really. Look at this. Eternity itself on Earth. St. Nicholas Orthodox Church, ground zero, New York City. Well, why am I showing this here? I don't know. Maybe because I wanted to illustrate where um, Catholic capitalism goes towards. And this is not the work of, uh, well, it is his work. Wait, I'm a little bit confused. I thought I, I included the work by Santiago Calatrava, but no, this is a project. I don't think it was built. No, it's a project that uh, Kevin Roach, well, as we know, he was a Catholic, but, uh, you know, he believed in God in some way. You know, maybe the God of the Egyptians, consider, consider the gods of the Egyptians, if he was not monotheistic, to believe in Ra uh, or Re. But here he worked for the God of the Orthodox um, Christians. And uh, he did, in my opinion, a, a pathetic building. I know it's not easy to build for uh, the Orthodox uh, religion because uh, it crushes you with its dogmatic demands. But I think he would have done better. In fact, he did better when he worked for Ford and other headquarters than for uh, uh, the God or God of the the Orthodox Christians. No. 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 Fine Art Center, University of Massachusetts, Amherst, Massachusetts, 1974, or almost 50 years ago. It's not bad, you know, it has the, the, the heroism, heroism of, of concrete, and it's, it has a clarity, it has a, you know, a, a certain uh, impetus. You don't know exactly where it is uh, leading to, but uh, you could say towards the infinite, uh, the horizon. Plenty of concrete, of course. But I, I like the vigor of the building. You know, it's, it's, it's a building which says we can still rule uh, the, the world, if not the whole universe. And uh, if it wasn't for the pollution, it would have been even better. A uh, section through, you know, uh, model uh, through how the light comes from above diagonally. It, it, it is a good architecture to an extent, but uh, without any Hamletian hesitations, without doubts. But maybe I'm not totally right because in this interplay between light and shadow, Maybe you could discern some kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, hesitation, perhaps. You know, you have light and you have shadow. You don't have just light or just shadow. And concrete, when it is, uh, uh, you know, sincerely expressed and vigorously, I think is, is convincing. Even this building, which has, uh, you know, a certain uh, 
height and uh, you know a certain number of floors, it has bigger, just like uh, some buildings by Marcel Breuer, for example, who was also an European crossing the ocean and building in the United States. Center for the Arts at this university in Connecticut, 1973. Uh, I guess uh, Aravena would have liked it with his elemental architecture. In then this picture, if you look, you could have said, wait a minute, you know, this, this is maybe, I don't know, some kind of a, a cemetery or a, it could be a, some kind of a cemetery. It's, 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 it's a building which uh, you wouldn't immediately associate uh, with a university campus because the openings are very, very rare and, uh, you know, done as, as he did them. That's because you don't see what's happening, uh, you know, on, on the other side. But uh, this, uh, this image, it could be many things. In a way, I like this very fact that it doesn't scream at you, I am a, you know, a university or a sum of classes and so on. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an architecture of uh, opaqueness. And this opaqueness is uh, uh, inducive to, you know, some kind of, uh, uh, who knows, maybe, maybe uh, Kevin Roach, who was raised in Ireland and uh, Catholicism was, uh, you know, was and is uh, strong there. Maybe this wall, you know, this blank wall of large dimensions could represent some kind of a, uh, maybe even interiorization or, uh, uh, I don't know. I'm just speculating. But look here again, you know, this could have been a museum. This could have been a temple. This could have been many things. John Deere, Deere World Headquarters, another headquarters, and it's a good building, done in steel, rusted steel, you know, uh, uh, Corten or not, 1978. I like this building. Although, again, let's not think about the, the expenditures. Sorry about these exasperatingly small uh, pictures, but you see that that he brought up many times nature into some kind of interplay with uh, with the functions uh, honoring man, uh, His Majesty Anthropos. Here is uh, is uh, is still at work, and you see it. And I think he did a good job. I mean, this is a very successful company that produces all kinds of machineries. So they had the money to commission uh, um, you know, uh, Kevin Roach and John Dinkelo. And I think they did a good building. Here, instead of having concrete, we look at steel. Steel in, uh, in a dialectical uh, uh, relationship with, uh, with nature. But I think they, they did a good job. It's giant, as you can see. It is giant. Now the headquarters for Santander Central Hispano located in Madrid in Spain. Um, I don't know what to think of this. You know, it's the, the function, it's a headquarters. Again, it must be a, a business in, uh, in Madrid. And yes, it is an architecture that expresses uh, authority and also uh, de deviant, um, a deviant tendency which could be misleading because uh, you would say, um, wait a minute, uh, this is not an authoritarian building because of its diagonals and this uh, uh, large square, but we shouldn't be deceived. You know, it's, look at this, it's very centralized actually. 
Yes, it, it has a certain uh, interest visually, but uh, also a certain demagogy in, 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 from my point of view. You know, it's, it's an inflated building. Why? Because it can. And then we have the curvatures, which try to induce a certain, uh, you know, fluidity to make people feel good and forget the, the actual function of the building. Um, as you can probably imagine, I, I am uh, to an extent uh, questioning uh, capitalism, but uh, what is the alternative? We don't have one, unfortunately. But maybe one will, will come into being. Um, yeah, these buildings, these headquarters, they all proclaim, you know, life is good, there is order, there is civilization, there are glittering materials, the salaries are good, the air is conditioned, everything is fine. But we know now that it's not fine. We know that the icebergs are melting. We know that the levels of the seas are rising. We know that the climate is warming up alarmingly. We know that pollution exists, maybe not in this building, because here we have an army of uh, you know, cleaning uh, people. Uh, and we have air conditioning and you know, all kinds of the, the, the paraphernalia of protection, as Rem Kolhas calls it. Otherwise, art here. So I don't know. We have offices, and here we have art, some kind of a museum. And the art is great, because art is making us believe in, a, in, in, the, in the other world, in the otherness of a, of a different world, even if that other world could be terrifying as well. Uh, RIT administration, student union, physical education buildings. <laughs> they are so solid and so, you know, assertive uh, that uh, you wonder, you know, is anyone in this building who doesn't know how to spell correctly a certain word? I have to, a word, I have to tell you, when I first, uh, when I arrived in the United States, I worked in an architecture office where uh, a graduate from a very good university, a North American uh, architect, uh, young himself, um, was coming to me for advice how to spell a certain word, although he graduated from an excellent uh, university uh, in, in the United States. And I was very, I, I was flattered, but also I didn't understand how come, you know, a North American, uh, you know, uh, man who was born in the United States would come to me, a recent immigrant, to learn uh, the spelling of a certain word. So when I look at these buildings, you would say, you know, in such buildings, people have, know everything. They know everything, and uh, uh, there are no, uh, you know, obscure um, areas or zones in the uh, in their learning. But it's not so. It's a fortress. It's known that the American universities are like this. You know, they are not. Well, there are a few within the cities, but many are, you know, in, in a protected, um, uh, you know, almost paradisiacal setting, like here. It's a fortress, the fortress of learning. But I read that actually uh, uh, this is misleading because you lead a very comfortable student life. And then when you finish, you go to the city and you, you, you are puzzled because it's a different kind of life, a different kind of reality. Uh, and here, uh, the protections that these fortresses of learning offer are gone in real life. So this building, uh, you know, tells you everything is fine on this earth, you know, uh, everything works. Now, the Knights of Columbus dies in, for papal visit. Yeah, he created this, um, this stage design for the vis visit of the Pope, because again, let's not forget, he was an Irish architect. And the Irish uh, Catholicism is strong there. And so he did, Kevin Roach, besides doing lots of headquarters for capitalism, he also designed, uh, you know, a stage uh, 
uh, thing for uh, for the Pope. What is this? Uh, I think we are approaching the end of this presentation. 1990, 757th Avenue. It's a tower, as you can see, with some uh, steps to make it a little bit more interesting. And it is a little bit more interesting, yes. Uh, lots of glass, otherwise no window ever opens, which means this building it has a, a, a massive, if not to say monstrous, machinery which produces air conditioning. It has to, otherwise you, you can't live there. But not just in this building, in any of these buildings. So there we, we have it, you know, the icebergs are melting, the levels of the seas are rising. It's not a bad building, it's a, you know, a tower in a city of towers where the technology of man uh, imagined that uh, we can conquer nature and we can conquer everything because go, go, go get her. extraordinary coke. Uh, can you imagine the amount of money paid for that, uh, uh, you know, advertising for that banner? And it's not the only one. Look, everything around is covered with banners. Berkeley's capital. What we see there, the George, uh, we did it. By George, we did it. Uh, by Coke, we did it. By banks, we did it. By uh, insurance companies, we did it. Yes, you did it. But the icebergs are not happy. Nor the seeds, nor the animals, nor the plants, nor winter. That's it. So let's have a short discussion, if you don't mind. 